Hello friends, I welcome you to my lecture on singular integral equations. There will be two lectures on this topic. This is the first lecture on the singular integral equations. Uh, let us see what do we mean by a singular integral equation. An integral equation is called singular if either the range of integration is infinite or the kernel has a singularity within the range of integration. For example, let us consider the equation f x equal to integral 0 to infinity sin x t by t dt. So, this is an integral equation where the kernel k x t is sin x t and the limits of integration uh, are 0 and infinity. So, uh, either one of the two limits is infinite or both the limits could be uh, infinite. So, uh, here the range of integration is infinite therefore, this is a singular integral equation and the in the second example is f x equal to integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus x t by t dt. So, here again the range of integration is infinite. So, it is a uh, singular integral equation and here uh, you can see that uh, uh, although the limits of integration are not uh, infinite, but the uh, kernel k x t is 1 over square root x minus t. So, it becomes infinite at t equal to x and therefore, this is again a singular integral equation. Uh, we shall be seeing how we can solve such uh, integral equations. Let us begin with the uh, Abel integral equation f x equal to integral 0 to x by t dt divided by x minus t to the power alpha where alpha is lying between 0 and 1. Here f x is a known function and by t is the unknown function. So, we are going to see how we can determine this unknown function by t. Now, this equation 1 is the integral equation formulation of the problem uh, you see when you take alpha equal to half when you take alpha equal to half then this equation is nothing but the equation which we discussed while we uh, took up the uh, case of a material point moving under the influence of gravity along a smooth curve uh, from a vertical height x to a fixed point o on the uh, curve. In the first lecture we had discussed this uh, uh, example uh, which is a problem in mechanics and we had uh, got a integral equation of this type where alpha was equal to half. So, here we are considering a general case where alpha could be any uh, real number between 0 and 1. Now, to solve this equation integral equation 1 what we do is we multiply both sides of this equation by 1 over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha and then integrate with respect to x from 0 to u. So, when you multiply both sides by 1 over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha and integrate over the interval 0 to u with, uh, then what you get is integral 0 to u f x dx over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha uh, equal to integral x equal to 0 to x equal to u 1 over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha and t varies from 0 to x by t over x minus t raised to the power alpha dt uh, dx. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to change the order of integration on the right side of this equation. So, here uh, let us say this is our uh, this is t axis this is u axis and uh, t varies from 0 to x. So, we have this line uh, this t equal to u. Now, wait a minute not, not, not like this. We have to take x and t this is let us say x this is t this is t equal to x. So, then t varies from 0 to t equal to x t is 0 here and t is x here. So, t varies from 0 to x and x varies from 0 to x equal to u. So, this is uh, x equal to u. t is x equal to u. <coughs> so, t varies from 0 to 
t varies from 0 to t equal to x and x varies from 0 and goes up to u. So, this is the region over which we are integrating. Okay, now, let us take a horizontal strip in this to change the order of integration. When you take a horizontal strip in this region, then uh, for the horizontal strip x varies from t to x equal to u. So, x varies from t to u and t varies from 0 to u, because at this point when x is u, t is also u. So, when you change the order of integration, you see that t varies from 0 to u and x varies from t to u. So, uh, after changing the order of integration, we get this. Now, what we do is, uh, let us uh, de define i equal to x to t uh, integral over x to t to x to x equal to u 1 over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha x minus t raised to the power alpha dx. That is uh, this integral, this integral let us define as i. So, we will be evaluating the integral inside this curly bracket, we are denoting it by i. So, when i is equal to this, let us define this transformation u minus x over u minus t equal to x. So, if you define u minus x over u minus t equal to s, then x will be equal to uh, u minus u minus t into s. So, that dx is equal to minus u minus t into ds. Let us uh, substitute this, uh, uh, well, this uh, transformation here. So, what we have? Uh, when you when your x is equal to t, so that u minus t over u minus t will become 1. So, the integral limits for s is 1 here, lower limit and when x is equal to u, you get s is equal to 0. So, the upper limit is 0 and dx becomes minus u minus t into ds divided by u minus uh, x. So, u minus x when you calculate uh, to the power 1 minus alpha, you get u minus t to power 1 minus alpha into s to the power 1 minus alpha and then when x minus t raised to the power alpha when we calculate x minus t raised to the power alpha gives you u minus t raised to the power alpha into 1 minus s raised to the power alpha. So, uh, this u minus t divided by u minus t raised to power 1 minus alpha into u minus t raised to power alpha gets cancelled and what we have is you can with this negative sign you can change the order the uh, limits of integration. So, i becomes 0 to 1 uh, i is equal to 0 to 1 uh, ds over s to the power uh, 1 minus alpha and uh, 1 minus s to the power alpha, which we can write as integral 0 to 1 s to the power alpha minus 1 into 1 minus s to the power minus alpha d s. Uh, this is also equal to s to 0 to 1 s to the power alpha minus 1. 1 minus s to the power uh, 1 minus alpha minus 1 ds. Now, let us use the uh, uh, definition of beta function. So, by the definition of beta function, this becomes beta alpha 1 minus alpha. And uh, when we express beta function into gamma function, we write it as gamma alpha into gamma 1 minus alpha divided by gamma 1 gamma 1 is known to be equal to 1. So, this is gamma alpha into gamma 1 minus alpha. Now, here we are we are given that 0 is less than alpha less than 1. So, when 0 is less than alpha less than 1, gamma alpha into gamma 1 minus alpha is pi over sin alpha pi. Uh, this is a well known result. So, when 0 is less than alpha less than 1, uh, let us use the result that gamma alpha gamma 1 minus alpha is pi over sin alpha pi. So, that is how we get the value of i to be pi over sin alpha pi. Let us put this value here, uh, then the right hand side becomes integral 0 to u uh, by t pi over sin alpha pi dt. So, we can take pi over sin alpha pi to the other side 
what we get is the integral of by t. So, uh, the integral 0 to u by t dt becomes sin alpha pi over pi integral 0 to u f x dx over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha. Now, let us uh, differentiate both sides with respect to u. Uh, differentiating both sides with respect to u by the Leibniz rule, see we have integral 0 to u by t dt equal to uh, sin alpha pi over pi uh, integral 0 to u f x dx over u minus x raised to the power 1 minus alpha. So, let us differentiate both sides with respect to u uh, then d over d u integral 0 to u by t dt will be equal to sin alpha pi over pi d over d u integral 0 to u f x d x upon u minus x raised to the power 1 minus alpha. So, by using the Leibniz rule what we get is the left hand side becomes a integral 0 to u plus by u We cannot just like that differentiate here on the right side with respect to u uh, by Leibniz rule because then the integrand becomes unbounded. So, we have d over d u this we cannot uh, differentiate here on the right side by uh, the uh, uh, with respect to u inside the integ uh, in, uh, integrand because then the integral becomes divergent. So, we we put it like this. Now, here what we have is uh, this is 0. So, we have y u this one is 0 we have y u here then this is 0 y u is equal to sin alpha pi over pi d over d u 0 to u f x d x over u minus x to the power 1 minus alpha or we can replace u by t. So, by t is equal to sin alpha pi over pi d over d t 0 to t uh, f x d x over t minus x to the power 1 minus alpha. So, uh, <coughs> so, this is how we get the uh, solution of the Avell integral equation. Uh, the unknown function by t is given by sin alpha pi over pi d over dt integral 0 to t f x dx over t minus x to the power 1 minus alpha. Now, let us look at uh, an example on this uh, Avell's integral equation consider f x uh, consider x equal to 0 to x by t dt over x minus t raised to the power half. So, when we compare this uh, integral equation with the standard integral equation uh, the in standard integral equation is this one f x equal to 0 to x by t d t over x minus t raised to the power alpha.
So, when we compare with this integral equation, what we have here is here in this example we have f x equal to x and 0 alpha is equal to half. Now, let us recall the solution of the integral equation y t is equal to sin alpha pi over pi d over d t integral 0 to t f x d x over x t minus x to the power 1 minus alpha. So, let us substitute uh, f x equal to x here and alpha equal to half. So, by t is equal to sin pi by 2 divided by pi d over d t integral 0 to t x d x divided by t minus x to the power half. Okay. Now, what we do is uh, let us define t minus x equal to s square. So, when we define t minus x equal to s square d x becomes minus 2 s d s and the integral 0 to t x d x over t minus x to the power half becomes integral over root t to uh, root t to 0 because when x is 0 here s is square s square is equal to t. So, s will be root t and when x is equal to t s square will be 0. So, s will be 0. So, integral over root t to 0 and then here in place of x we shall put t minus s square and uh, d x we shall be replacing by minus 2 s d s and in the denominator t minus x to the power half will become s. So, this s gets cancelled and we what we have is uh, with the negative sign we can change the limits of integration and we have the limits of integration as 0 to root t uh, t minus s square d s this is what we have now let us integrate. So, 2 times t s minus s cube by 3 0 to root t. So, this will be 2 times uh, t to the power 3 by 2 minus t to the power 3 by 2 divided by 3. So, this is 2 into 2 by 3 t to the power 3 by 2, what we get is 4 by 3 t to the power 3 by 2 and thus by t becomes sin pi by 2 is 1. So, 1 over pi d over d t of 4 by 3 t to the power 3 by 2. So, this is 1 over pi 4 by 3 into 3 by 2 into t to the power half and this gives you 2 over pi root t. So, by t equal to 2 to the 2 times t to the power half divided by pi is the solution of this Abel type integral equation. Let us uh, discuss one more example on Cauchy integral equation. Let us consider x square equal to integral 0 to x by t d t over x minus t raise to the power 2 by 3. Then comparing it with the general form with the Abel integral equation we have f x equal to x square and uh, alpha equal to 
1 by 3 because the uh, Avel integral equation is given by f x equal to integral 0 to x by t d t divided by x minus t raised to the power 1 minus alpha where 0 is less than alpha less than 1. So, when we compare uh, the given integral equation with the Avel integral equation we find that f x is equal to x square and alpha is equal to 1 by 3. Now, let us uh, uh, recall uh, the solution of the integral equation. The solution of the integral equation is then given by Uh, by t equal to sin alpha pi over pi d over d t integral 0 to t f x d x divided by t minus x raised to the power 1 minus alpha. So, let us substitute the values of alpha and f x here, then we find then we have 1 t is equal to. So, alpha is 1 by 3, so we have sin pi by 3 divided by pi d over d t of integral 0 to t x square d x divided by t minus x raised to the power 2 by 3. Now, let us find this integral evaluate this let us evaluate this integral. So, let us put uh, t minus x equal to u cube. Uh, then d x minus d x is equal to 3 u, u square d u and so integral 0 to t x square d x divided by t minus x raised to the power 2 by 3 becomes when uh, x is equal to 0 u is equal to t to the power 1 by 3 and when x is equal to t u q is 0. So, u is 0 and uh, x is equal to t minus u cube. So, we have t minus u cube raised to the power 2 then d x is minus 3 u square d u divided by t minus x raised to the power 1 by 3 is u. So, the denominator becomes u square we can cancel u square and then what we get is integral 0 to t raised to the power 1 by 3 3 times t minus u cube whole square d u which is equal to 3 times integral 0 to t raised to the power 1 by 3 t square minus 2 t times u cube plus u to the power 6 d u or we can write it as 3 times 
t square into u minus 2t u 4 by 4 plus u to the power 7 by 7. And which is equal to 3 times uh, you t square into uh, t to the power 1 by 3. So, that becomes t to the power 7 by 3 minus I get half t into t to the power 4 by 3 that also becomes t to the power 7 by 3 and then we have 1 by 7 u to the power 7. So, we get t to the power 7 by 3 at the lower limit this expression is 0. So, what we have is uh, this is let us simplify it further. So, 3 times uh, let us take t to the power 7 by 3 common. So, 1 minus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 7 t to the power 7 by 3. And when we take LCM here, we what we get 14. So, we get here 14 minus 7 plus 2 into t to the power 7 by 3. So, we get 3 into uh, 14 plus 2 is 16 minus 7. So, 9 by 14. So, into 9 by 14 t to the power 7 by 3, which is 27 by 14 t to the power 7 by 3. So, we have calculated the value of the integral. Now, let us put it here. So, thus y t is equal to sin pi by 3, sin 60 is root 3 by 2. So, root 3 by 2 pi d over d t of 27 by 14 t to the power 7 by 3 and this is equal to root 3 by 2 pi 27 by 14 into 7 by 3 t to the power 4 by 3. So, when you can this you can cancel and this you can cancel. So, what we get is this is 9 root 3 by 4 pi t to the power 4 by 3 and thus we have the solution of the uh, given integral equation as by t equal to 9 root 3 divided by 4 pi t to the power 4 by 3. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss the general form of the Cauchy integral equation and how we can solve the general form of a Cauchy integral equation. Thank you very much for your attention.